Hi folks, welcome to version 0 0.113. I am recording this late at night with everybody in bed, so I am going to be talking softly. Um, but I wanted to just very quickly bash out a tutorial for those of you who want to try out the new update, uh, which is in the fresh experimental branch on Steam. So you'll need to install it manually, even if you were already on the experimental branch, it's a separate new branch. And uh, it's, it's very different, Tank Designer. And it means if you haven't got prior experience with some form of 3D modeling software, um, you're going to find a very steep learning curve, which I'm going to at least give you a start in um, climbing. So when you boot up Sprocket now, you will get this design. This is our new base design. It's just a simple box. And on the base tab on the left here, um, with that selected, you'll then have these three tabs in the whole window on the right hand side. And you'll notice there's no turret, but there is one waiting for us here in the available structures at the bottom, but we'll get to that later. The other thing to draw your attention to is these three buttons down here. Um, scale, translate and rotate, which we'll get onto very shortly. So, when you've got vertices selected, the vertices on your hull are highlighted. The red dots on the corner are your vertices, or each one singularly is a vertex. And to select them, you do not left-click them, you right-click them. Then this tool appears, which allows you to manipulate them. While we've got translate selected, it means we can move them like this, in all three axes. We can also now undo by using Control Z or Control Z if you're across the pond. This is really helpful because the new update is so flexible, you are guaranteed to uh, do things that you would probably rather you hadn't done. Um, and even somebody who's experienced with manipulating 3D objects uh, on computers like this, you're going to end up needing that undo tool. So, anyway, back to what we're talking about before. If I change which tool I've got selected, it changes the icons on the tool. So scale looks like this, and rotate looks like this. Now, um, as you probably saw when we were doing translation, um, although only one vertex is currently selected, um, mirroring is automatically applied um, for the most part when you're making these edits. It is possible to make a, um, an asymmetrical hull, um, but some restraints to the flexibility of the designer are in place to stop you being able to make completely twisted, unrealistic messes. Um, so, what to say next? Well, you can select more than one vertex at a time. So if I hold down shift and right click on this one, you can see the tool has moved to the middle, uh, equidistant between the two, and I now have both vertexes or vertices rather selected. Now this allows us to use the scale tool. If we had only one selected, actually it does work. Um, it's automatically mirroring it as I said before, but the logic here is that if you've got both selected, you can now scale that distance between the two of them, but there would be nothing to scale in these other two axes. However, if I was to select these two, then obviously it can now scale them like this, and that, as you can see, is being mirrored on the other side to stop us from having a twisted mess of a hole. Um, but now, oh, it does mirror it as well. There you go. So what we've effectively done there is select an edge. We've got the two vertices at either end of an edge. So if we go to the edge tab and we select it, we'd be doing the same thing there by scaling that on that axis. But it wouldn't be meaningful to scale um, along this axis and this axis with an edge. Um, but it would be meaningful to translate like this. Um, rotation 
is somewhat limited. You can't, again, as I say, make a twisted mess of a hole by rotating here. Um, in most cases, rotating a single edge is going to be restricted to some extent. You're going to mainly find the use for the rotation tool with faces, which we now got selected. I select a face and I use the rotation tool. I can, you know, make my very low in this instance uh, front glacier sloped. And you can see the slope readout is still here, it's over here. Um, so this is how you're going to want to do your sloping is by selecting a face and using the rotate tool. You could also do sloped plates by using edges um, and the translate tool. Um, but I can't see what angle I'm creating there until I select the face using the face tab. Um, remember selection of faces, edges and vertices is all done with right click. Um, so that's some muscle memory you're going to have to learn. If we have the edges tab selected and I select an edge, um, it has a special function which is split, which is key map to J by default. And what that does is it splits that edge in half, but not only does it do that, it currently splits the entire hole, uh, the entire structure along the center line in, in half if we cut that edge. Similarly, I don't have to select all four edges around my box here. I can simply split this one. And as you can see, a new ring of edges has been created. And now my hole is effectively in four quadrants. Um, so if I go to faces, you can see it's, I've now got four parts, um, which I can mess about with, with some level of freedom. But as I say, it's not complete 3D modeling freedom. Um, you're not going to be able to do you know, replicas of Michelangelo sculptures in this, it's going to be replicas of tanks. Um, so the other thing to mention is that at the moment, um, armor thickness is determined in the faces tab. And uh, I have found that unfortunately, it does tend to get reset quite a lot. Um, if you make any changes to anything and I'm not entirely sure why that is um, but we will um, no doubt get fixes to this in due course so and now that plate is actually 107 millimeters thick but um it's listed here as not, not having any thickness. Um, so that's that's problematic. Anyway, as you can see, you're going to have a lot of flexibility to customize things in this update uh, once it's been made a little bit more user-friendly and a little bit more stable. But you, I can keep splitting these edges over and over and end up with something that's really quite fine tunable um, none of this was remotely possible before so the the potential here for making uh, proper accurate replicas uh, and some very interesting original designs um, is huge potential huge potential it does just need some refining of the user interface and stability uh, I find it's unfortunately quite easy to, to break uh, internal space at the moment as well. Like that, see, it's gone to zero, zero. So if that happens, you're going to need to go back to the main menu and then start over or reload your design. Um, the other thing to mention is on the faces tab, if you select a face, you can now um, extend it which works like this. And so that is now a, a structure on top of my original structure. And I can do that again. Um, but I don't just have to do it. You know, I can now extend this face um, out like this and all kinds of crazy stuff starts happening and becoming possible. 
um, equally you can delete a face and then all of a sudden we can see into the interior of the tank which means that um, open topped designs and things are entirely possible now I guess um, if you're feeling sufficiently daring to try it out um, so that's basically all I want to talk about for the the whole tools um, you really are just going to have to play about with um, translation and rotation and things like that to find out how they work in their individual contexts but uh, try not to be intimidated by it it does all make sense um, it's just a matter of, of learning to think in the brain process of, of editing my vertices or my edges or my faces using the tool scale translate and rotate to get the desired effect and obviously cutting your edges to create more faces and vertices to edit is 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 the, the, probably the, the main um, skill you need to learn in terms of shaping your holes then in the structures tab we can add turrets um, and these are edited in exactly the same way um, the faces edges and vertices tabs and I can I can cut it in half just like before I can you know start to make something that looks vaguely turret shaped um, relatively quickly um, you can edit the ring height and diameter the basket space is now a separate slider which is cool um, and obviously the the torque and ratio for the the turret traverse is now here um, and that, that those functions appear on on each of the three tabs um, you can add more than one turret you can add them on the sides you can add turrets on top of turrets and they each get internal space um, and they will each have their own motor um, but these will not move at the moment because they won't have a uh, crew in them and they won't have a gun and it's the having a, a gunner and a gunner sight and a weapon that is what the game's coded around to um, cause the turrets to rotate in the direction that the gun is pointing basically so they're just there for um, aesthetics you can't fix them in place anymore like you could before the turret there's not a checkbox to fix the turret um but you wouldn't need to because you would just um create a face that you could extrude um like we said using the extend tool here and, and that would be effectively your your fixed turret if we if we reset everything um and then I was to go to edges, select the edge, J. So I cut that, select this face, extend. Um, and I want to translate, pull that up. And then look, I've got my fixed turret casemate right here. The very basic. Um, similarly, if I want to, you know, put a, a, a simple front glaciers on this, cut that edge, makes a ring of edges around my tank now, select that top edge, I can do an upper glaciers by dragging that back, or my preference would be to do it through faces, and use the rotate tool to give me the angle I want. Um, but it's really up to you. There's more than one way to skin a cat and there's more than one way to make the shape that you want um, using these tools. So just, there's no wrong way to go about it, I don't think. It's just whichever feels uh, the most intuitive and natural for you, uh, do that. Uh, the other thing that's changed in this update is that you can now uh, scale all the features individually. Um, so if I right click on them, it selects them and then I can 
rotate in every access con axis conceivable. And if I change the tool, I can translate them through the hole, what have you, um, and I can scale them, but not just at universal, I can, I can scale on each axis, which can do all kinds of crazy and interesting stuff. Um, so that's going to allow us to do some really cool looking things. Um, there's some things being added to the, the structural tab, like these, and fender fronts. Um, so that that's all interesting. And of course, they are equally as editable. Uh, whoops, lost that one. Uh, let's see what scaling this out can do. I mean, yeah. So have fun with that. Um, and I think that's everything that there is really to talk about just now. Um, so hopefully, as I say, soon we'll get... Oh, no, there was one more thing. Sorry, before I go. Uh, back to faces, back to our hole. Um, if I select this face and I select the translate, your hull can now phase through your tracks. Um, why would you do this? Well, because it just increases again the flexibility of the design that you make. But this is going to, you know, make um, Churchill-esque designs or um, early war, uh, World War I tanks with um, sponsons sticking out through the through the tracks or whatever, just that a bit more um, simple to replicate. You know, uh, it's not for me to tell you how and why you would justify doing this. The fact is that you now can. Uh, and if I stick a, a driver's viewport on here, uh, it's, it's still gonna work even though the hole goes through the tracks. So have fun with that. Um, a quick note about T-Bag. I'm not going to be using this new update for the next round of T-Bag just because it's not stable enough and it's not yet. Uh, the UI isn't there yet to make it accessible enough for a, a fair contest to be held in it, I don't think. So we'll carry on using um, the experimental branch version 0 0.1121 uh, for, for T-Bag until such time as uh, 0 0.113 uh, reaches a level of polish that I think it's then suitable for the purpose of running the contest in. But I'm very excited to see what people do with the added flexibility this update gives when we get to that point. Uh, I hope this was helpful. It's certainly not exhaustive. Uh, sorry it's quick and dirty. I don't have uh, the time uh, or probably the expertise to do any better, but it will hopefully get some of you uh, started at least. Take care out there.